Ready? Ready? Let's Hi. talk. Oh. <laughs> Archie Marathon's talking about group work today. Group work. Group work. It's fun, isn't it? The most hated thing by students and staff at universities. Always the biggest complaints. So why do we still do it? I work alone. Roll intro. Group work. I don't know why group work always gets left up to me. Every time. Mm. And everybody else gets to take the credit. And I'm sick of it. I'm sick of it. Yeah, so it sounds like it's inequity. That some people cruise through, other people have done all the work, and then other people get to take the credit. Does that sound about right? That sounds about right, and that's usually the complaints yeah. uh, to to, uh, to uh, tutors, to lecturers, yeah. and uh, yeah. yeah, and they hate it too. They hate having to deal with that stuff, and therefore the university hates that. So why do they keep doing keep doing it? Why do they keep doing group work? Mm. Because guess what? There's no genius. There's no star architect. That's all marketing bullshit. Uh, architecture is a product, like most things in life, of group input, of complex social uh, groups. Um, contributing to something. And guess what? There's inequity. Look at the world. Watch the friggin' news. There is inequity. Uh, and it's just the reality. It's Learning to work with other people. That's why group work, arguably, is probably the most important out of all of it. It doesn't show your individual genius, hmm. which you don't have any. None of us do. <laughs> None of us do. Frank Gary, you're a genius. What are we talking about? Good work. Oh, thank what? you. Hang on, wait. What did you say? Ping pong balls. I don't. It's easier if he's not here. What for him? He's not here. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I don't know where he is <laughs> most of the time, but it's actually easier with him just doing don't disturb him. Yeah, so good work. Somehow there's mm. a lot of distractions as well. Yeah. Like, we mentioned this before on the channel. Do you, do you have more? The problem, one of the problems architects have is they produce work that looks inevitable and simple. And that requires the greatest amount of effort. And you've got to work through so much complexity and mess. And guess what? Society is mess. Working with other people is difficult. It's full of politics. It's the way that you get it done. So what about sole practitioners? That's the argument, right? That you just practice by yourself. What does that mean? There is no such thing as a sole practitioner. Sure. No, no because you end up client as part of the team. They're part of the process that you work with. Um, consultants, they are part of the team you work with. You're not trying to screw them over. Everyone is trying to work together to achieve the best outcome. A successful architect is somebody that works really well with a group. So they can work with their client group. They then need to work with councils as well, which represent the whole of, of the community. They need to then go into uh, different mindsets of how to work with consultants, then how to work with a builder, how to work with um, the, their trades that are on site. To be successful as an architect, you need to know how to work with complex and diverse and ever shifting groups. That's the reality. And it's inescapable. So all that hate at university with group work, yeah? How can, how can people get over it? Well, maybe they need to go through it. Maybe that shows the success of the group work um, that we're forced to do at university is that it's not as easy as Thank just you. you as an island without anybody else disappearing to your studio and that, that's a result of education. The process of primary, secondary education, it's you work by yourself, you work for yourself, you work for your own marks. That's why marks are bullshit, really. Marks are stupid. At the end of the day, when you're being employed, you are being employed for who you are as a team player, 
as a human being, more than just your skills, more than your cat skills, more than your critical thinking skills, it's how you also work as a team. That's why they employ you. You are part of the team. Yeah. That is an important skill to learn. And that doesn't mean that it has to be about extroverts. Extroverts are rewarded. Like, again, people find it really surprising when they hear that I'm an introvert. Like, I have sort of one day out and then I've got to hide for four days to recover. Um, there, it's not as though we're talking about if you're an introvert that doesn't really want to socialize much, that therefore don't bother. You just need to learn skills. I had to learn skills to, to produce the projects that I've produced um, in navigating those, those situations. Oh, okay. And I went through exactly the same thing at university. Not enough. Yeah. Did you just keep it down? What was I talking about? I wasn't paying attention. Okay. <laughs> it's messy, but so is the practice of architecture. It's really messy. If you get to choose a group, hopefully it's not an even number, it's an odd number. Politics. Making decisions and moving on. Because despite this idea of uh, you can brainstorm of ideas, you actually in some ways get less ideas, but each one just becomes more strong because mm. you all work together in theory and then you, you push something through rather than coming up with a zillion ideas. And you also make the decision quicker because the problem with a lot of designers go, oh, I can do this and I can do that. And then, you know, people just go, no, let's just do that. Yeah. And then you go, right, let's do it. So yeah, this, this, uh, this decision making as a group is important. And therefore, that's why E. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's why. <clears throat> that's why even numbers are good. They're not good. <laughs> not good. Not good. Because, yeah. you know, you can't, you can't make a clear vote. He's awake. He's go, awake. Go get us some beers. Not to pay you later. Useful, finally. It's for the team. <sighs> what are the ways that in real world you deal with a group work and try to have some kind of equity, some, some kind of accountable uh, action? And you're a fan of the keeping minutes, is that right? Well, I'm not a fan of it, but it's just something you should do and could do. Yeah. So that you have meeting minutes and you also have the actions that needs to be done by different parties. So you can hold them accountable as well. And also you can use that as a document. It's, a, it's just a mature document to, to show others, uh, tutors and stuff that, you know, this is what was discussed and this is what was meant to be done. Yeah, that's actually really good because not only are you then making a note of action items, this thing is really important in terms of profession, action items out of meetings. They're not documented enough. These skills aren't actually taught to architects, but saying to somebody, this is your on your to-do list, yeah? Everybody else is doing their stuff. So you minute that. So you can come back and have another, when you have your next design session or whatever, you can go, right, let's go through. Has everybody done their, oh, haven't. It's interesting. <laughs> but also, <clears throat> they're really great skills. Like uh, the amount of times I've had employees where I've gone to have a meeting with them to give them instructions on this is how I want this thing to go forward, this is your task. And I start talking and then I just see them just looking at me. And I'm like, and I pause and I go, can you, can you get a pad and a bit of, and a, and a pen? Because I'm not sure you're capturing all this. I'm not sure that you're actually putting down, and especially when it's in a bigger meeting too, like did you capture that? That, that person's gonna do that task. Like it's really important, that, not that person. He's in his own world. I, well, I'm assuming psychedelics of some sort. <laughs> so, like this episode, the reason to do group work is because of the process. You need to get used to working with other people on complex things, knowing that you need to compromise, knowing that you need to find a middle ground. And like group work at university, the end product, quite often, isn't very good. But I don't think that's why you do it, is it? Well, I've had some really good group work. No way. I have. Yeah. In second year, we were, we were lucky enough to have a, we actually studied the theory of working in groups and we actually had to document one skis project that was on the
So in some ways, you know, you look at some of the best partnerships of uh, practices like Denton Coco Marshall, you know, big ideas man, beautiful drawings and big detail man, and then someone who just knew how to run a business. And they all kind of get together and, and talk about design as well, but they just also have their strengths and they go and do their own thing. I once heard John Denton say uh, that he would not sit Barry Marshall in a client meeting. Oh, he's a very introverted Yeah, person. he's very introverted. He likes sitting in a dark room. And luckily, they all found each other because John is the... Dude, when we're in these, can we just, like, mute? Just, just silence our phones. It's not that hard, is it? I once heard John Denton say that he would not put Barry Marshall in a meeting with a client. And so Barry Marshall is... a Real introvert. Yeah, he likes sitting in a dark room drawing. He does these most amazing drawings. Whereas John Denton is the extrovert. You can see in their houses, their own yep. houses, their holiday house. Barry Marshall have this beautiful bunker, basically. In, in inward looking. Very, very introverted. Yeah. Dark. And then uh, John Denton has this big box, can't leave it out on top looking of the hill, out, just overlooking. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. It's, just, it's just their character. Yeah. And then you've got um, Corker, who runs... The business and runs the practice. Or did they're all pretty much retired now? Mm. Um, but it is interesting when you find those meetings of minds because people are diverse. Um, but yeah, it is a bit of a problem when you get egotistical men uh, in one room. That's something that's not done enough in universities: is explaining to students why you're doing what you're doing. Well, I think it'd be great to say to students, "You're about to do group work. The reason you're about to do it is this, and we want you to pay attention to the outcomes." Now, that's pretty cool, because whenever I did group work, I was like, why are you putting me in this group with these morons? <laughs> Half of my friends, still morons. <laughs> I still keep a few morons about. That's just I never study with you, so you can shut the <laughs> up. Shut the <laughs> uh, Bill is so sick of this. That's a team. Yeah. Of very different people. A team of very different people, yeah. I love this plan. I'm excited to be a part of it. Let's do it. Discord has been where, again, a lot of where all this conversation came from. So check it out. Link in description below. We're going to get more beers. That was his one job. Beers. And he failed. <clears throat> he failed. That we all failed at. What? Are we marked together, it's not a, separately? It's a good effort. No way! I thought the tutor would watch this episode and say, that Andrew, he's a, he's a smart man, I'll give him an 80, and that other jerk, I'll give him 5. No, it's a good effort. You, you need to lift everyone up. That's f you, f you, That's and most of all, f you. Well, f you too, but the point oh, of group work is that you want to not compete and trying to elevate everyone at the same time. He's right. I'm always right. He's right. This time.